a second-hand furniture store. And I think my prices are fair. Well, I did. Until this real cheap guy walked in one day. Saw this chair he wanted to buy. But wouldn't. Claim the price was too high. So I looked him straight in his eye. And this was my reply. If I can't sell it, I'm gonna keep sitting on it. I ain't gonna give it away. Now, if you want it, oh, darling, you got to buy it. And I mean just what I say. Now, how'd you like to find this waiting at home for you every night? <laughs> Only been used once or twice, but it's still nice and tight. Wow! But if I can't sell it, I'm gonna sit back down on it. I ain't about to give it away. Now, you can't find a better pair of legs in town. And a back like this. Not for miles around. And that is why, if I can't sell it, I'm going to recline upon it. I don't see the need to just give it away. Cause it's made for comfort. Built for wear and tear. Where else would you find such a easy chair? <laughs> Oh, but if I can't sell it, I'm going to sit back down on it. Why should I give it away? Oh, because it's lush, plush, slick and sleek. Darling, a high-class piece like this at any price is cheap. So if I can't sell it, I am going to remain seated on it. I don't see the need to give it away. Now, look at this nice bottom. <laughs> Ain't it easy on the eye? Guaranteed to support any weight or size. Oh, but if I can't sell it, I'm going to remain seated on it. I don't see the need to give it away. You know, I have really had my feel of folks always coming around with their hands stuck out. Won't something and don't want to give up nothing. Now, if you want this, put your hand in your stash and give me some cash. If you want something for free, go to the Salvation Army. Don't come messing with me. Now, this is not St. Vincent de Paul's place. This is Ruth's place. Miss Rhythm, Ruth Brown, joins us now to talk about her early success as a rhythm and blues singer in the 1950s, the tougher times she experienced when the sounds of popular music changed in the 1960s and 70s, and her extraordinary comeback. This year, she was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and she'll appear in the musical review Black and Blue, in which she gives her Tony Award-winning performance February 17th on PBS. Welcome. Great to see you again. Good to see you again, yeah. Charlie. It's been a smooth ride. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it has. Let's talk a little bit about the ride that you have taken. Um, back, born in Portsmouth, Virginia. Yes. And, uh, did you start singing early? Oh, yes. Uh, I guess my earliest recollection would be at about age four. Yeah. Um, in in the, choir? Yes, in the church, naturally, in uh, what was called the baby choir. But then I did a lot of solo work under my father's direction because he was actually the voice in the Weston family. Yeah. And there were a lot of... Born Ruth Weston. Yes, that's my family name, Ruth Weston. Uh, and there were many times that there were weddings and uh, school recitals going on, and they always called on that little Weston girl. <laughs> I sang for a lot of weddings, you know. I sort of drew the line at the funerals because I couldn't get to that. But... Yeah. Uh, that's where it all started. And then you're 14 or 15 and Jimmy Brown oh, yes. takes you away, doesn't yes, he? Yes, he does. Literally takes me away. Like, 
sight unseen. I, I laid eyes yeah. on this young uh, naval officer he was mm -hmm. at that time. And he also was a musician, trumpet player. Yeah. And I heard him, and we started singing together around in the clubs in Norfolk under the name Brown and Brown. I took his name right, right. there. That was before the marriage. I took yeah. Brown and Brown because it, it sounded good, you know. And when we got ready to leave, and he was going to leave with a band he was traveling with, I insisted that I want to go. And you were 14 or 15? I was about 15 at yeah. that time. And... Um, much to my father's dismay, you know, but I went anyway. <laughs> Much to your dismay yes, when you found out he you was married. I believe it. I found out he was married. But that was after I yeah. got married to him yeah. because I only did that because we found out yeah. we were coming back to Portsmouth, which I thought was not going to happen. Mm -hmm. The tour was canceled, and so we ended up having to come back to Portsmouth. So I, when I got to Elizabeth City, you know where that is, yeah, I stopped I in Elizabeth City and got married. We're talking North Carolina <laughs> That's now, That's right, we? North Carolina. And then you end up in D.C., yeah. Uh, and and you're singing at a play, little place owned by Blanche Calloway, who was yes, Cab Crystal Calloway. Yes, called Cabins. Yeah. Yes. And the great Duke Ellington walks in. Yes, he did. He walked in one night along with a gentleman named Willis Conover, who yeah. at that time was the voice of America on radio. And uh, I was working at the club just to earn enough money to get back to Virginia, yeah. to my home, because I'd gotten stranded. They had been left by Lucky Millinder. He fired me, and Blanche had given me a job, and I was singing and. The great Ellington came in that night. And at that time, I was doing all ballads and things that I had heard, Vaughn Monroe tunes yeah. and Billie Holiday, who I was just mesmerized yeah. by you her. Were copying her a little bit. Oh, yes, definitely. Yeah. Uh, the pictures I'd seen, I tried to emulate her in looks as well as sound. Yeah, did know. she come backstage once and say, What you don't, if you copy me, nobody will copy you? Exactly the greatest lesson I ever had in my life. I was working Cafe Society and uh, along with Josh White, mm. and he told me that Miss Holiday was in the audience, and I thought that that was a cue to do all my Billie Holiday <laughs> songs. So I pulled out everything and sang them like just phrasing exactly. Yeah. And she got up from the table, yeah. which embarrassed me. I didn't understand the reasoning. Yeah. But when I went back to the dressing room, she was standing there. As I started to go by her, she stopped me. And she said, you know, every time you do that, they're going to call my name, not yours. Yeah. She was right. And so then you found your own style. And yeah, Ellington, well, she told me that I should, yeah. which I did. And did Duke Ellington set up the appointment with Erdogan and, and Atlantic Records? Yes, it was he and Willis Conover. Yeah. They went to the telephone that night and called right from a pay phone at the club and called uh, Ahmed Erdogan, Herb Averson, who at that time had a young, fledgling yeah. record company called Atlantic. And uh, Ahmed didn't get in right away, but they sent Herb Averson, and they had a gentleman named Blackie Sales working with them at the time. Yeah. And they came to Washington and listened to me. 51 through 54 were glory years for you. You oh, sold yes. more records, I guess, than anybody did. Yes, you? I was at the top of the heap. What was the, the song, Tears? Teardrops in My Eyes was the first thing to stay in the chart 27 weeks. And then, of course, the biggest tune uh, was Mommy Tisha Daughter Mean yeah. in 1953. And no matter what I recorded, that's the song that everybody, everybody remembers. Wants to hear. Yes. Even today. Even today. Mama, don't they treat still you. do it, you yeah. know. And so I guess that's sort of a, a wonderful thing to have people remember one particular song. Yeah. In the meantime, a couple of marriages. Yes. Always with saxophonists. Yes. <laughs> what? <laughs> what it is about the Reed section. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, music changed. Yes, of course. Know, and rhythm and blues was not as strong as it no. was. No. And there was no more record contract. You'd left Atlantic That's Records. That's right. And all of a sudden, Ruth Brown ain't got no songs to sing. That's right. And you end up with two kids. I have two sons, on yes. On Long Island. Right. And you have to do what? Domestic work. I drove a school bus, and I worked in daycare center. I worked uh, out of a temporary agency, you know, that yeah. would call and send me on jobs, and I would go. And the dignity about that was I didn't have to go to pick up my paycheck. They'd mail it to me, you know. Yeah. So I was doing fine until one day I was going out dressed in this white uniform, and one of my sons had missed the school bus. Yeah. And he saw me all dressed in white. He said, where are you going? Mom dressed like that. And I said, I'm going to beauty school. Yeah. I'm going to learn how to be a beautician. You know, that was just to uh, kind of 
keep their little dignity intact. Yeah. But the truth of the matter was, at that time, I was working as a personal aide in the home of one of his teachers. Wow. You know. Did you believe then you'd get back to oh, yeah. entertainment? If I wanted to. Mm -hmm. um, I, I didn't really have any idea that it would end up the way it has. You know, it's that I would. Than you ever it, dreamed. it was better than I ever thought. You never yeah. dreamed that you'd win a Grammy. You never oh, no. dreamed that no, you'd get no. a Tony. What brought you back? Well, first of all, I would say if anyone in the world, it was Red Fox. Yeah. My friend Red Fox came to Long Island at the Westbury Music Fair, and I'd never been there, and I was working in the daycare program at that time, and a friend of mine took me to see him because they'd heard me say that I knew Red, and so they took me on my word. They wanted to dare me to yeah. go backstage, you know. And I was a little leery because Red by this time was world famous. He was Sanford, right. the Sanford and Son. So I was just worried that he just might say, well, I don't know who this Ruth person is. But he didn't do that. And when I went to the back door, he just welcomed me with open arms. And he asked me what I'd been doing, and I told him. He said, you mean you're not singing? And I said, no, well, there's really not much for me to do yeah. because I've got to stay here in this place in order to see to my children. So he said, I want you to come to California. And I said, I can't afford to come. So he said, well, I'm leaving tomorrow. You'll hear from me. And mm -hmm. sure enough, a couple of days after that, he called me. And when he called, he called me at the service station across the street because that's the telephone number I gave him because yeah. I didn't have a telephone at that time. And he called me and said, there's a ticket for you and $500, and I want you in L.A. To do a role in a what? Sanford and Son. I did a walk-on. Yeah. And then you went, come back to Broadway, though. I mean, first you went to Paris, then you came to New York, and then Well, we Paris. went to Paris before uh, we did the Broadway yeah. version to of To do Black, Black and Blue. Blue. Yes. Yeah. Started out to be an eight-week or so eight run, and it ends up eight months. Eight months. Yeah. And yes. Then, and who brings it back to Broadway? Um, Claudio Segovia and Hector Orzoli. Yeah. And uh, they brought it in under the auspices of Mel Howard uh, Productions and opened in the men's scarf. They, of course, they auditioned the people again because mm -hmm. a couple of the characters were not uh, the originals that were with us in France at the time. What is Black and Blue? Black and Blue is a musical extravaganza that deals basically with the music of the early 20s. The I would call it the flapper age, but it deals with it from a perspective that young black people have not been able to see except in your old films. Yeah. Uh, the dances uh, simulated as they were in the Cotton Club, you know, which was famous in Harlem, but not able to be attended or go to by people who lived there. You know, it was frequented by the very rich from downtown. You're going to sing a couple of things up for me here. Yeah. Uh, I mentioned one other thing. There was a PBS documentary, too, oh, about yes, called you. Oh, yes, That Rhythm and Those Blues. That Rhythm and Those Blues. Yes. And you've got a new album. An album came out since then. Mm, I've got Fine and Mellow, and uh, I'm uh, getting ready to now go into the studio in about two weeks. For another album? Yes. Yeah. I should also talk about the notion of what you did for so many artists. I know uh, for, for, fam uh, for some of the people who had not received their royalties, yes. you fought your battle, yes. all those years at Atlantic, yes. you've got some money, but you also fought for Sam and Dave. Yes, and for, and for a lot of people, Joe for, Turner, Brooke Benton, Hank Ballard, uh, Carla Tom, oh, the list is kind of... Great black artists yes, who never got... Yes, the it, originators of the music. Because the record companies would charge their, their traveling expenses Everything. against the royalties, so they'd say there's no money. Everything you've was charged it. to you, and you ended up most times owing or being in the red, so to speak. But we had no knowledge of foreign royalties, you know, records that were sold out of the country. And uh, so it just got to the place that I finally found someone uh, who was a, an attorney who was a lover of the music himself. Who was willing to take it on. Because yes, he and he was, his mother had brought him to see me on yeah. an Alan Freed show. Jackie Wilson yes. died yes. in 1984 yes. with all that he'd done. Nothing. Nothing. Not Nothing. even enough money to afford a tombstone. It was the most hurting thing that I can ever remember experiencing. Uh, there was a, a wonderful friend of mine called uh, Jack the Rapper, who was right. Jockey Jack from years ago, who started the fund uh, and raised money 
to put a tombstone on Jackie's uh, grave. And for me, that was painful mm. because I couldn't understand, you know, that the record company at least could have done that. You know, and having known Jackie the way I did and I traveled with him very often, he was a very proud person. He mm. would have been ashamed yeah. to have had that be done. Well, this is the music I grew up with. You're going to do a couple of things. Introduce Bobby Forrester who's over there. Hi, Bobby. Oh, nice yes. to have you here. Yes. Uh, tell me what you're going to sing for me. Well, whenever I look at all the good things that are happening, I think about the lady that I was inspired by, and that's Billie, Billie Holiday. Holiday. I'm still remembering what she I mean, said. Yeah. I'm still doing her songs, but not just like her, mm -hmm. in respect for her. You're going to do a couple of numbers for me? If it's okay by oh, you. Oh, I love it. Good to see you. I haven't seen you since it was the Rock, the Rhythm and Blues Austin, Foundation. Austin, Texas. It's in Austin, Texas. Yes, indeed. I'm going to slide out of the way. All right. The great Ruth Thank Brown. Thank you so much. My man don't love me, treats me awful me. My man, he don't love me, treats me awful me. He's the lowest man that I've ever seen. He wears hydrate pants. Uh, Stripes are really yellow. He wears hydrate pants. Stripes are really yellow. But when he starts to love me, oh, he's so fine and mellow. Treat me right, baby. I'll stay home night and day. Just treat me right, baby. I'll stay home night and day. Lord, but you so mean and evil, I know you gon' drive me away. But love is like a faucet, it turns off and on. Love is like a faucet. It turns off and on Just when you think it's on It has turned off and gone How about that, Bobby? It's all right. Treat me right, baby. I'll stay home night and day. Well, just treat me right, baby. I'll stay home night and day. Lord, but you so mean and evil, I know you gonna drive me away. Love is like a force and it turns off and on. Lord, love is like a faucet, it turns off and on. Just when you think it's on, it has turned off and gone. Oh, yeah. That was wonderful. Oh, What's next? You. Can you do one more? Yeah, I'd like to do another Billy's tune. Okay. Good morning, heartache, you old gloomy sight. Good morning, heartache, I thought we said goodbye last night. I tossed and I turned until it seemed that you'd gone. But here you are with the dawn 
I thought I'd forget you But you're here to stay It seems I met you When my love walked away And now I start each day By saying to you Good morning, heartache What's new? Stop haunting me now Love I can't shake you no how Please, oh, please leave me alone. I got those Sunday blues right straight through Monday blues. Good morning, heartache. Here we go again. Good morning, heartache. You're the one who knew me when. Great to have you here. Thank you. I got to, I got to move yes, on only because you might as dinner. well. The great Ruth Brown. It's so great to have you. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you, dear. Bless you. We'll be right back in just a moment. Stay with us. Good morning, heartache. Sit down. Sit down. 